Hey there everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Olmi and today we are back with Stars Order 6 rounding out our season. So when you got two days of racing, luckily for us they're all together. We got four races at Santa Anita on the 25th of September and we've got three at the Belmont Park 1st of October. So some interesting races. I did book one more, which was Galloping Gusto in a Grade 1, one mile. But the jockey, the head jockey, the head lad says that we're close to over racing. And you know me, guys. I don't pay attention to that enough, so I thought I would this time. So it means we're in pretty good position at the moment. A couple of bad records to correct, but we can't really do too much. I think it's Return Voyage, no, not Return Voyage, Dangerous Minds on the side, Galloping Gusto, and one more, Rushing Winds, was it? I'm not sure. Tridovic is ready to go. So, on the side, we can't find races for Dangerous Minds there. Return Voyage is okay, Blissful Retrieve is okay. Belladonna. So Belladonna is close to being over race, which she has run more than every other two-year-old. So we can kind of accept that. We can accept that. So we've got three, 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 two, three, two, three, 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 and unranked as our graded two-year-olds. So let's go then. Let's see what happens. I did get a question. It's just this little bar here to hide the race list and show more of your owned horses so if you've got too many you don't want to scroll down or up or whatever then you can just do that uh, and i don't really need to look at the races there so i'm going to pause the recording jump forward to the 25th looking at the auctions along the way if anything sort of good crops up i will be pause unpausing um, and we will show that but probably not it's usually quite difficult to find something good. So sadly, a couple of bad auctions there. Either side of a... There was... The second auction was a decent one. There was a couple of prospects that maybe you could take a risk on, but grade two winners, not grade one. So I didn't feel that that was uh, an option for us. So you can see now, we're going to travel nearly 2,000 miles to head to uh, Santa Anita, I believe it is to actually get four races in, Sweet Treats, Peach Pipe, Secret of Mine, and Blissful Retriever. So, we're going to start with Secret of Mine, two-year-olds. You can see here it's just shorter than a mile, and this is a grade one race. We are second highest behind Maysia Joe. We've got a couple of other decent horses in this. We are third behind Master Builder and Maysia Joe as favorites master builder looking agitated tipsters though they do include those two horses but double the chances of mine there according to the tipsters two like us one likes either of our rivals and the fifth one didn't pick anyone so possibly too close to call so master builder green with the light brown sleeves miser joe purple in that sort of a star pocket so that's on the inside my joe we get off to a good start there out early and we see master builder now at the rear of the field so seven and a half furlongs we're going to go right in behind dover's hill ultimate empire just oh no actually just, ultimate empire i thought that was us ultimate empire into second place my joe just ahead of Embassy Crag, and on the inside, it is Secret of Mine. Then back to All Smiles with French applause just behind the Master Builder. In the rear, probably a closer. So it looks like we're in decent position. If Embassy Crag speeds up a little, which he is doing now, then we could see Maisie Joe blocked off a little and give us clean air to run in. Four furlongs left to run we're going to make our move now round the outside to get into position master builder still at the rear all smiles off picture with french applause just in picture now mc crag and maisier joe there just behind us 
We're up into third at the moment. We're in good position on the track. We're not letting Monsieur Joe have an easy time of it. We're coming round the outside of Ultimate Empire, making Maisie Joe run even further. Two furlongs left to go. Here goes Ultimate Empire. Here we go down the straight. Both of us passing Ultimate Empire's um, sort of uh, competitor early on. Dover's Hill. I lost my train of thought. Secret of Mind pushes well out into the lead. Maisie Joe holds back, is going to take second place. And Ultimate Empire probably going to hold on to third there. French applause with a good run right at the end, but Secret of Mine hand in the air from the jockey. Nice, easy win, and that will be that. Oh, yes, that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Oh, yes, Secret of Mine just won the grade one front runner over a mile, and that is absolutely fantastic. So, Race two of the day, second favourite, Sweet Treats, who's on a little bit of a good run. Top rated horse. And uh, Fear and Greed, the lowest weighted horse, is, uh, yeah, a very nice horse indeed. Wow. Okay, so I can see why they would be one of the best there. Cranimal Boy is in this, ro in this race. Wild Harbour, good horse. Rivlo World we've competed against before. Where's Bailey? Good record there. In the paddock, it looks like things are okay. Wild Harbour and Cranmer Boy a little bit boiled over, so that could take them out. And the tipsters say Wild Harbour to take it. Even Stevens, the only person there to put their neck on the line. So too many competitors to really look for silks in this one. Sweet Treats out to a decent start there. Cranimal Boy will go out into the lead, and there goes Avow just ahead of them now, taking over. Fear and Greed on our outside now is going to come up alongside into the second place fight, and Cape to Rio just behind. Cranimal Boy, then where's Bailey, Wild Harbour, E Major, uh, Shirataki, and Rivula World now in a group at the back. But they are not detached, they are not far enough to discount, even if they are not closers. Six furlongs left to run. We are in good position, running steadily here in second place. It looks like Fear and Greed on the inside might be ready to make a move there up the inside and move clear into third. Five furlongs and here comes the rest of the field. This is bunched together rather well. Sweet Treats now doesn't quite want to go into the lead. Going to give up a position to Cape to Rio. It looks like where's Bailey on the outside, but we do have clear track in front of us. If we want to run around this bend and really push, we could be in good position. So, where's Bailey, Wild Harbour, Fear and Greed all there with us. On the inside is Fear and Greed in third place. Second, Cape to Rio, Avowed still leads. But here we come round the outside, two furlongs, and now we'll see the charge round this final bend and into the the home straight here let's see what goes on sweet treats there fear and greed on our inside trying to make up a little bit of distance but they're going to fade back now avoid avoid trying to avoid getting caught for second place wild harbors there here comes e major making a really good run for the line but sweet treats will take it e major second and avoid really thought he would tail off badly instead comes home in third a very nice win for us but a very nice performance as well for a vote and that kind of makes me feel a lot better cranimal boy his record ruined finally yes sir yes sir we don't need to worry about any horses right now sweet treats with another win that's another grade one and i am absolutely delighted with that performance so very happy there just under a mile here now for our unbeaten two-year-old blissful retriever by far the top rated everyone's the same weight tipsters should be going for us three out of five are nobody else is being picked looks like a couple of others aren't going to run well so hey we will see what happens here but blissful retriever should rack up another grade one win here for us nice and early in this video three races at this track today Two of them have been hand-in-the-air wins. 
Can Blissful Retriever complete the hat-trick? It's a decent start there, personal legend. A good start on the inside. We move into the lead, but then Diamond Bracelet up the inside on the rail will take over that position. We've got Pioneer and Catan and Data with us, just seeming to uh, hold just behind the leader. Then a few lengths back, Divine Rocket leads out Eurocoin Lady and Personal Legend at the rear of the field. Six and a half furlongs here. We are running on the inside near the rail in third place. If we don't get boxed in, if we've got clear air to run into, I think that this will end up being a very nice position to take at this stage in the race. Diamond Bracelet still leading us out now over five with Pioneering Cat in second place and we've made a nice move to the outside and we are chasing down now as we come to the midpoint of this back stretch. And Data now moving even further to the outside trying to make a move. Divine Rocket, Personal Legend and Eurocoin Lady still at the rear some lengths. Blissful Retriever nudges ahead as we start this turn. Three furlongs though, Diamond Bracelet will take that back on the inside before giving it back at two and a half to Blissful Retriever as we start kicking out now preparation for the sprint for the line. Pioneer and Cat is going to come at us a little bit here, as is Andata. No doubt there'll be a closer to come. But right now, with a little over one furlong to go, Andata's making a move there up into third, but this is nice and easy coasting to a win is Blissful Retriever. Four wins out of four. Another hand in the air. Three grade ones in a row today, and all of them by enough distance that the jockey felt the need to celebrate early and that is fantastic three length win a cozy cozy victory and that means we've got two grade one winners at two years of age and that doesn't happen very often doesn't happen very often for me peach pipe now last two races have not been wins but very very good Starcat, an absolutely fantastic horse, but ran a couple of days ago. Hopefully that will count against it. Um, apart from that, there's not too much in this field I really worry about. So, when we look here, it looks like everything might be okay. Starcat there, the favourite with Magiriara Lady being tipped and the Kalila just ahead of us. Not really sure why. I think we've got fighting chance in this one. So, the Rodeo Drive, one mile, two furlong, grade one, here on the turf. And again, I don't think that we really need to sort of look at silks, because this is a very good competitive field. We will get a good start and move out into the lead here. Nine furlongs to go, and, well... They're all just letting us go to the front. They're bunching up at the rear. Claude Hopper, Duchy of Cornwall, Today Nag Royale, Magiriara Lady, the Kalia, and there is Starcat just leaving them out. So eight furlongs. We have got two or three lengths here, but Starcat looks like they might want to be closing that gap down a little bit, moving away from that chasing pack and coming to join us up near the front. The Kalila is there as well, though, not willing to get left behind. Six and a half furlongs to run. Peach Pipe now well within distance for Starcat to strike. Did we go out too early? Did we go out too fast? What happened? Is that going to cost us? I don't know. But Peach Pipe very happy to be running in first place. The jockey not trying to hold up and wait for Starcat. Starcat is going to make a little bit more effort to try and get up alongside now as we come in towards four furlongs. And there we go. Finally, almost side by side, three and a half furlongs. But again, Peach Pipe not willing to have people running alongside just yet and really kicks on to make sure that they have not got any other horses in their vision. Two and a half furlongs here comes star cap round the outside now the kalila round his outside this is going to be a three-way dash for the line and any other closers from the back could make a point of it and here we go then one and a half furlongs star cat starting to move a little bit out you can see that peach pipe doesn't quite have enough to come back into this it seems 
The Kalila slowly gaining a little bit of position may be enough, but I think Starcat's gonna take it. Peach Pipe holds on to second from the Kalila, and that is a decent result. Not the win that we all wanted, but that's a very good run against a very, very good horse. That is a very good horse there. So, Starcat has won 16 grade ones now. Of course, of course, I knew that name. I knew that name. Why did I know that name? Because it's the Starboard Bow and Kitty Kingdom. It's one of our horses. Oh, it's one of our horses. Oh, 131 rated four-year-old. I mean, yeah, we give Starcat up and look. That was a horse worth worth keeping on with and uh ugh. Peach Pipe not quite able to keep up, but um a good run. A very, very good run. So can't be too disappointed. Now I think that's all four races done today, so we're gonna skip through that. So one, two, three, four races today indeed. So second for Peach Pipe, sweet treats, uh Secret of Mine and, of course, Blissful Retriever there with the wins. Very, very happy. Now, we got one auction to go through here at the end of September. Let's have a look. Anything in here? Nope. Nope, that's worse than the second auction. So, not even worth a second of my time to think about. Cresting Queen, Wild Retriever, Green Peaches will run today. And yeah, this, this is the big testing time now. October, we're getting towards the end. The end of the season is coming close. So Green Peaches, another chance to make a two-year-old into a grade one winner. They are unbeaten, so is Whitney Girl. Now we know that's a decent horse. So we're going to have to keep an eye out there. They are the bookies' favourite. They are the highest rated. They are the form horse. We'll have a good shot at this. Calm after the storm as well. Another decent horse that we know. So in the paddock, it looks like we're parading a little lazily. And uh, we get one of the jockeys with us. The rest are going for Whitney Girl. So this is going to be a match race between the, uh, those two horses, I feel, and then calm after the storm, probably the third best in the field and could challenge if conditions are right. But let's see if we can rise up to the challenge. So Whitney Girl in that, yeah, right out there in the lead, you see, on the outside in that purple and blue silk. And we've got calm after the storm in this red with yellow sleeve. So they're together. We're now up into second place. Just under six furlongs to run. Love your sister out in first. Upping the tempos there in third behind us. Then it's back to calm after the storm with Whitney Girl just on its outside. Mi Parada right at the back there on the outside with Liquid Sunshine trying to make some ground up on the inside rail but remains at the back of the field. Four and a half furlongs to run. We're still in second place. Fairly comfortable. I feel that Whitney Girl and Calm After the Storm will start making their move soon. Here comes up in the tempo as well. Round our outside to fight to get into position. Love your sister. Still not being caught yet. Three furlongs to go. You see that Calm After the Storm is making a move round the outside. We're hopefully not going to get blocked in here on the inside. And we've got some room to run, so two furlongs to go now. We are clear in second place. We are charging down. Here comes Whitney Girl. You can see starting to make their run. One and a half furlongs. And it looks like Calm After the Storm is going to drop off. Whitney Girl's going to make a running of this yet. Love you, sister. Just going to fall away from second place. Liquid Sunshine is there as well. Going to coast in a second. Whitney Girl fades, Green Peaches wins, and that is a phenomenal race with another hand in the air and another grade one two-year-old. Fantastic progress. Absolutely fantastic progress. We're starting to get now 
into that stage of the breeding campaign where we are breeding grade one winners at two years of age and they're winning against good company too make no bones about it Whitney girl the fantastic horse fantastic horse her first step up to a mile though she met her match in green peaches the lazy little filly two wins at six furlong two wins at one mile two grade threes a grade one now absolutely fantastic laid back she's got all the stats in the world that i'd want to see as a two-year-old and um yeah very very excited to see what she can do in the next coming season we still got a couple of horses here though cresting queen down the order a bit despite winning some races hidden ticket that's one of ours that is one of ours not yet won a grade one but in one here the Kalila is back once again apart from that nothing to really worry me so casting pearls and the Kalila seem to be the uh, the main horses in this but let's see what Cresting Queen can do I'm looking for a top three here hoping for more of course but um, I really think we should be able to get at least third so a mile two flower bowl invitational grade one for three-year-olds and above let's see what happens and it's a decent start for us there not too bad hidden ticket now just on the inside and you can see love sting up into second place there with casting pearls going out into first radiantly and then us up there with hidden ticket acting deputy and white cat then far and deep coming up with the Kalila on the outside and on her way just there as well so hidden ticket now in the Kalila almost side by side we're just in that mix as well looks like our route through will be blocked off at this stage six and a half furlongs to go casting pearls and love sting up there at the moment just making all the running as they cross the six furlong marker radiantly now just coming into that picture with acting deputy white cat and far and deep side by side then it's back to us with hidden ticket on our on the inside with the Kalila in between and on her way well on the outside at the rear looks like we're moving to the outside here in preparation for a move up the field with four furlongs less to run let's go cresting queen let's start making a move three and a half furlongs now we need to be in better position than this i feel and i think this race might have gone away from us i don't think that we're going to have enough to make a huge impact here I could be wrong I've been wrong before but casting pearls now reaches the two furlong marker unmolested far and deep is there love sting radiantly hidden ticket white cat then it's back to cresting queen who is making a great push up the field but has left far too much far too late far and deep's gonna take this from love sting um no from radiantly but cresting queen might just get there that's close for second place and that's a good run by cresting queen and it is a second place two lengths back again decent run by cresting queen again these three-year-olds not really being ultra competitive in the uh, grade one races but I'm really hopeful that the two-year-old crop's going to perform better in the future. So, you see here, not too many horses there that haven't run recently. Cape to Rio's back, Cranimal Boy, Barling Hasig, Shuck to Kran is there, Benny the Swinger. All these horses are there. Recipe for Revenge is one that we bred. So, how is that one doing? Not too bad. Two grade one wins. So more than world retriever going into the jockey club gold cup here at belmont so we'll see what we can do it's going to be a tough ask again to win this one duffy's tavern and balin hasig the two favorites but benny the swinger is the bookies favorite 
Bolin has a top weight. Where amongst the low weights here, sorry, rated, the weights aren't really too much of an issue. But I'm hoping any advantage we can get will be good. So World Retriever has a chance to prove that they belong in the top echelon of horses. They got the inside draw here. And you see Cranimo Boy again off to an early lead. But a uh, long race this one. We've got nine furlongs left to run. But as we cross that nine furlong marker, it's going to be Cranimo Boy in the lead from Duffy's Tavern. Then back to third place, Balin Hasig. Cape to Rio Shak to Kudran, now in fourth and fifth. Then World Retriever leads out the pack with Secret Edge, Chancellorsville, Recipe for Revenge, and Benny the Swinger in a line. Seven and a half furlongs, no change at the front. Cranema Boy just running his own race now. And we can see World Retriever just about keeping pace with this group of horses. Six furlongs to race. And we're in decent position, but we do make sure... We need to make sure we're up in good position by the end because we are a closer, but these are not bad horses. You know, Shakhtar Kudran, Balin Hasig, they are big-time threats. Cranimo Boy could be a big-time threat. And Benny the Swinger is a decent finisher. So we need to be getting in good position. Let's go, World Retriever. Four furlongs left to run. It's still Cranimo Boy by a couple of lengths ahead of Duffy's Tavern, Cape to Rio and Balin Hasig, all nearly side by side in the line. Shark the Kudran on the outside there as we come under three furlongs. Secret Edge comes up the inside of Wild Retriever and it looks like now we're not going to have the pace for this race. Cranimo Boy still leading under two furlongs. It's one and a half now as we zoom back in on the lead. Here goes Balin Hasig into the last furlong. He takes over the lead. And by a length or so by the time that marker comes around, Balin Hasig will take this one. Cranema Boy fading now down the home stretch. Cape de Rio and Chuck de Cadran will fight over second place. Secret Edge comes through out of nowhere, possibly taking the second. And World Retriever, I think, is sixth. So Bolin Hasig, Secret Edge, Chuck de Cadran, Cape de Rio, Benny the Swinger, and indeed, it's a sixth place for Wild Retriever. Not the best run. Too far. Too far. Okay. Oh, I didn't think it would be too far. I think that's our last race as well, so not the best finish, but okay. Okay, Cresting Queen picks up a second. World Retriever picks up a sixth. But Green Peaches is the two-year-olds again. Really impressing. Green Peaches, four wins out of four with a grade one under her belt. Blissful Retriever, four wins out of four with a grade one under her belt. And Secret of Mine, four wins out of five. A second place to go along with those but also a grade one win at two year old. So pretty good there. Rushing wins four out of four at grade two. Return Voyage is grade two, winning four out of four. Everybody else I believe is grade three there. Galloping Gusto, Dangerous Minds and Belladonna. And on the side, I'm really not sure we're gonna find races long enough for them to compete. So on the side and Dangerous Minds, we're gonna see but um, that's going to be in the next video, guys, which could be the last run of races for some of our horses. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, have your say in the comment section below. Let me know how your games are going, um, what you like to see more of, less of, etc. Give me some feedback, guys. Have your say, as always. And follow me on Twitter as well, at Chris or me. You know, we've got giveaways going on there, FHM3. Um, we gave away, we're in the process of giving away a time of recording the um, the keys for Out of the Park Baseball 17. I mean, more giveaways hopefully in the future, but get involved guys. It, they make great Christmas gifts, even if they're not the game for you. And Christmas just around the corner now, a couple of weeks away. So maybe it's the time to get something for nothing. 
and give a gift that someone else will love. So get involved, guys. Have your say, as always. And I will see you back here for more races as we're getting close to the end of this. We're going to be able to update fully once more and just get things running a bit smoother and a bit better. Hopefully, this crop of two-year-olds onto the new game, when they get transferred over, will become world-class three-year-olds. And, um, you know, then we'll see some real monsters coming out of the breeding barn. We'll see a lot more grade one wins. And we'll be back to where we were in, uh, you know, last year, really, when I was playing this series. And we had some really good monster horses. So hopefully we'll get back there soon. But thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying. Take care and come back for the next video. As always, support is appreciated thank you guys and i'll see you soon